So in this video, I'm going to talk about the momentum matrix element. Uh, so up till this point, we've been dealing with the dipole matrix element, or this thing that I've been writing as psi1 uh, x psi2. And this is for uh, an electric field polarized in the x direction. Um, it turns out it'll be a lot more convenient to work instead with the derivative. Uh, so instead of x, we have d dx psi2. Uh, because this this just makes our mathematical lives easier in the future. And so I'd like to go over the connection between these two and how we get uh, this momentum matrix element. Uh, and strictly speaking, this isn't actually the momentum matrix element. The, the momentum matrix element should have another minus IH bar inside there, but uh, I, I digress. So we got this dipole matrix element by trying to figure out how we could create a perturbing Hamiltonian. Uh, or how we could, how adding a time varying electric field, so we assumed it looked like x hat e naught uh, cosine omega t, uh, we tried to figure out how that affected the potential energy seen by the electron. And so we integrated this and multiplied by q, uh, and we eventually got that the perturbing Hamiltonian was just q e naught x. Uh, and that was nice and simple. But it was somewhat ham-fisted. Uh, we kind of had to had to weasel our way into this. Um, turns out there's a much more elegant way of writing uh, the Schrodinger equation, which just directly accounts for the magnetic field, or sorry, the uh, electromagnetic field. And that's in terms of this vector potential here. And I'm going to write these all as vectors. So rather than... Uh, Actually, this, this v now should be just a function of r rather than x is equal to, and wow, I just keep dropping wave functions everywhere, uh, is equal to e psi. So before, and this is squared, oh my god, Jesus Christ. But this was somewhat ham-fisted, uh, and we had to make a lot of assumptions to get there. It turns out there's a much more elegant way to write the Schrodinger equation in terms of this thing called the vector potential. Uh, and I'm going to write the one-dimensional form of that here. Uh, so qax squared psi plus v of x, our potential psi, is equal to e psi. So if you haven't seen it before, uh, and let me just be super explicit, uh, this px here is minus ih bar times the derivative in terms of x. And this ax is the x component of what's known as the vector potential. Uh, and if you haven't seen it before, it's used a lot in antenna theory, but it's a, a really elegant way of capturing the electromagnetic field. Um, and for, uh, for a zero charge density medium, uh, the vector potentials related to the electric field, uh, just the electric field is a negative derivative of the vector potential. So by including it here, we're sort of integrating um, the value of the electric field. And so we're, uh, we're changing, we're figuring out what the momentum change is essentially due to the uh, electric field. And that's just by incorporating this in here. Um, and so if we expand this equation, so we don't even need a, a, to make any assumptions here. Uh, we'll get px squared over 2m minus qpx times ax divided by m uh, minus q squared ax squared over 2m uh, plus v of x. And then this all uh, multiplied by psi is equal to e psi. Now this guy... Uh, so this term here uh, added with this term here, this is just our old original Hamiltonian, h naught. So minus h bar squared over 2m, second derivative with respect to x, uh, plus v of x. This was just our original Hamiltonian. And uh, so we can just rewrite this real quick. Uh, so h naught minus q px ax over m. Oh, and this should actually be a plus. Uh, plus q squared ax squared over 2m psi equals e psi. So this is our new Schrodinger equation. Uh, the Schrodinger equation that sort of automatically takes into account the electric field. Um, now, if ax, our vector potential, is small, um, so in other words, it's much smaller 
uh, compared to say this initial Hamiltonian and compared to the contribution from the momentum, um, then we can just ignore this term here. And this is what's known as linear uh, electromagnetics. So if we were to include this term, then uh, our equations would be become would become nonlinear, and we'd have to deal with all sorts of uh, the the mess that ensues from that. Um, but just by ignoring it, which is generally a valid assumption, uh, anytime linear optics works, basically, uh, this is a valid assumption, which is most of the time, uh, then then we're good. So the electromagnetic field isn't interacting with itself to, to do weird stuff, essentially. Uh, and so our final Schrodinger equation is just H naught uh, minus Q PX AX over M uh, plus or actually, actually our V of X is included, uh, psi is equal to E psi. And so this guy here, uh, we can just look at as our new perturbing Hamiltonian, H prime. So before we had H prime in terms of the position, uh, in terms of position, so in terms of X, uh, now we have H prime in terms of momentum or in terms of the derivative. So if we write this out, um, in terms of its its derivative, this is just what uh, Q, or we've got an I Q H bar uh, AX divided by M times the derivative with respect to X. So this is essentially two equivalent ways of representing the same thing, uh, light. And if we assume the electric field and the vector potential are sinusoidal in time, uh, so our electric field is just E naught times some cosine of omega LT, uh, then we can, our, our vector potential is going to be the integral of this and is of the same exact form. So it's just A naught times cosine of omega LT. And uh, let's say that these are both in the X directions uh, so that we don't have any trouble with the polarization. And since E is just uh, minus dA dt, uh, that's just equal to, what is that? We're differentiating, so we've got a minus A naught omega L times sine of omega L t, uh, still in the x direction. So uh, this should actually be then uh, a sine, uh, so E naught sine omega L t. And so just by staring at this, we can figure out what E naught is in terms of A naught and our, our light frequency. Uh, it, they're just the same thing here. Uh, or A naught uh, is just minus E naught over omega L. And so now we can sub this back into the Schrodinger equation, uh, or, or back into our perturbing Hamiltonian. And uh, this whole part here is AX, the X component. So we, we just swap that in here. Uh, we'll get that h prime is just equal to uh, minus i q, or there's an i there, q h bar uh, e naught divided by omega l times m. And now we've got our cosine there, so cosine omega l t d dx. So this is really nice. Now we've got things in terms of the electric field. And if we compare this to what we had before, uh, we had before that h prime was just equal to q e naught x cosine of omega lt. Uh, the cosines haven't changed, but instead of an x here, and the, the q e naughts haven't changed, we've still got a q, we've still got an e naught. Um, now instead we've got uh, this, a bunch of other stuff. So we've got an extra i h bar or minus i h bar over omega l times m. And we've got a derivative with respect to x. And this is instead of uh, x essentially. And you might say, uh, Jordan, that's not simpler at all. We've got an extra like four physical constants to deal with. Um, but because we have a derivative instead of an absolute value of the uh, coordinates, uh, it'll make our lives a lot easier. So if you go through the entire process again, uh, Fermi's golden rule, all that jazz, um, you'll get that our new matrix element, our momentum matrix element uh, is proportional to the derivative. It's just psi one uh, d dx psi two. And there's some extra proportionality constants out there. So we've got an i, we've got an h bar, and we've got some, some extra stuff.
But if we ignore all the physical constants, this is really what the the guts of the um, our new matrix element are going to be. So instead of uh, having x here, we've got a derivative. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, please give it a like down below. Also, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please feel free to post those. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.